All right, well, hey, shout out to everyone at all of our campuses, Mountain Road, Abingdon, Edgewood. Special shout out to my Aberdeen community. What's up, gang? And uh, shout out to anyone watching on YouTube. Glad you're here. Uh, my name's Charlie. And uh, well, we've all heard the phrase from older generations like, what does this world come to? Or it's all going to pot in reference to how messed up and wrong the world is now compared to when like they were growing up. But let's be honest, we aren't naive. The world as we know it is a broken, messed up and twisted place. Unfortunately, we don't live in a utopia where the toilets are made of gold and the streets are clean and there's no trash. The reality is that there is pain and suffering. And a few weeks ago during our Christmas series, you all had the opportunity to write something that you're struggling with or you've struggled with on an ornament and put it on the Christmas tree to be reminded that what's on top of the tree is greater than what's on the tree or below the tree. And the things that you guys wrote were sobering. Lots of you mentioned divorce of parents, loss of loved ones, relationships with family that are broken, your mental health, your anxiety, your depression, seasonal or not. And you all have experienced the brokenness of this world and how it's perpetrated every aspect of your life. And so when life hurts, when we are going through our struggles, when life hits us, how do we respond? That's the name of our series, When Life Hurts. Because if we're being honest, you and I both have some sort of problem, struggle of situation that we're going through right now. And I'm not asking you to say it out loud, but you're probably thinking about it or have thought about it in the past 24 hours. And it's tough, right? It's not fair. It might be crushing your spirit and I'm so, so sorry. And if you're bold enough to ask, you've asked the question or maybe you're asking it right now. If God is so loving and cares for me so much, why is there so much suffering in this world? <sighs> Ever thought of that question? I, I know I have. And we need to stop. And I think we need to acknowledge this question because it's a very good question. Uh, whenever we're struggling with mental health or something else in our lives, it's only natural that we ask where God is. This is a really straightforward question, but I think we need to have some backstory here. Ultimately, we suffer because sin exists in this world. So in reality, we suffer because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Now, let me explain. God creates Adam and Eve in his image and desires to live in a loving relationship with us. But there was an enemy at work. Deceiving Adam and Eve into believing that they should be able to determine what's good and bad. And you can read the whole story in Genesis 3. However, this plan to decide good and evil comes crashing down. And instead of becoming more like God, they become warped by their sinful actions and separate themselves from God. So what is sin? Sin's like a disease. It's much more than breaking rules. It's a disease that infests itself into every part of our lives and our worlds, pulling us further away from God and shifting everything that God desired to be good. Our political systems, our family relationships, our health, all of it doesn't live up to the original intent that God had in mind for it. And thus, we have suffering. So why is there so much suffering? Well, because us humans messed up God's initial design and sin has left everything broken. And it's important for us to understand the world didn't just get bad the past 20 years and no, it hasn't been getting worse since COVID. In fact, scripture's filled with stories of God's people suffering and enduring through hardship time after time, but yet remaining faithful to God. Let's take a look at Joseph. Joseph was the youngest brother of 12 boys. He was loved by his father, but disliked by his brothers because of the dreams that he told them about. He had dreams about his brothers bowing down to him, and their father saw it as God's prophecy for the family. But because of this, the brothers sold Joseph into slavery, then went on to convince their dad that Joseph had died. Tough luck, right? Then Joseph was in prison due to false accusations about sleeping with his master's wife. But however, through all of this, Joseph never lost faith in God. And eventually, Joseph ended up at the right hand of the Pharaoh, where his brothers did end up bowing down to him. How about the bleeding woman in Luke 8? She had been bleeding for 12 years. 
She was seen as a dirty, unclean woman. And in that time period, that meant that she was isolated from her community and left alone to figure out what to do. That's not a good situation to be in. However, she believed that Jesus could heal her. When she touched Jesus' cloak, he told her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Maybe you can relate to the woman in Luke 8, suffering from incurable or chronic illness or experiencing spiritual battles. Do you turn to God when the struggle is real? Or what about King David, the famous and mighty David? Surely he didn't have any struggles, right? He defeated Goliath with a slingshot. God calls him a man after his own heart. There is no way that he can relate to my struggles that I go through. Well, David's reign was stained when he committed adultery with Bathsheba. And the consequences of his actions were severe, involving the death of his first son. Beyond David's wrongdoings, we see a man who truly repented and had his words about God etched in history forever because of his faith in God despite his struggles. Here's what David said about his suffering. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Are you willing to admit and cry out to God when you mess things up and get and things get tough? Or what about when David cries out to God in Psalm 31, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away within. And I'm not a mental health expert by any means, but that certainly sounds like depression to me. Or have you ever heard Paul's story? He goes from persecuting Jesus followers to being a persecuted Jesus follower. His story is turned upside down. He is thrown in prison and shackled with chains for preaching the gospel to people. However, through all this, he never complains once about being in jail, but gladly boasts that Christ's grace is sufficient. And through suffering, we can glorify God. Or what about Jesus? We all know Jesus. No suffering can come close to the extremes that Jesus experienced on the Mount of Olives up until his crucifixion. Jesus' suffering shows just how truly he loves us. So when Jesus says these words in John 16, a few chapters before he gets crucified, we can take comfort in knowing he truly means what he says. When he says, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus' love for us, God's plan for us, are greater than our present suffering and circumstances. And if you don't hear anything else that I say today, I hope the one thing that you take away is that you're not alone in your struggles. You're not the only one going through your current situation and you won't be the last. And here's the tricky thing about suffering. There is a real enemy out there who would love nothing more than to whisper in your ear and tell you that no one has ever felt the same way that you feel. That you're crazy for feeling the way that you feel that you should be ashamed of yourself because of the situation that you're in, that you could never tell anyone. And don't even think about asking for help. You're supposed to be strong enough to get through this. Oh yeah, and you're suffering? Yeah, it's a direct result of your sin. You've actually put yourself in this situation. You just don't even know it, or maybe you do, and that's more reason that you should feel ashamed. That's a lie. Everything that I just said was a lie. And let me say this real quick. You are not defined by your present suffering. You are not defined by your suffering. You are not crazy for feeling the things that you feel. Your experience is your experience. You have a community around you that cares deeply about you, that you can trust with whatever is going on in your life. I hope you know how loved and cared for you are. And your suffering is not a part of God's design or plan for your life. 
Suffering has existed long before and will exist long after you are here. So what do we do in the meantime? Just give up and die? Well, like I said, there is a community here where you are welcome to express yourself, your full self, and share your current situations and reality with your group. You and I have a God that would love nothing more than to hear from you, the real you, about the real emotions and real thoughts. And you don't need to be this polished and proper person in order to pray to God. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. When things get tough, do you throw in the towel? Do you stop praying? Now's the time to be honest with yourself. When things get hard, it's easy to feel like God has abandoned you and given up. If you feel like God has abandoned you, it's okay. We feel what we feel. However, I want you to know it's not healthy to stay there. Be reminded of the truth. It breaks God's heart to see suffering. And he wants nothing more than for you to bring your whole self to him. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So, have you ever tried to bring your problems to him? What would it look like if in times of need you turned to God for comfort before turning to your phones, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your video games? What if we responded to our suffering from a posture of knowing the truth that God loves you deeply and cares for you and hurts when you hurt? Rather than responding from a place of our emotions and our hurt and our anger and frustration, You know, there's a verse that says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Anyone here crushed in spirit? Maybe it's time to turn to the Lord. But this brings us all back to the question that started the whole conversation. If God's still living, why does suffering exist? Because the world's broken. Sin exists and corrupts everything, and we have a real enemy at work. But one day, one day we will be reunited with God. And let me leave you with this image from Revelation 21, 3 and 4. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among his people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear away from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Isn't that a beautiful image? of what life will be like when God returns to dwell with us and there is no more pain and suffering. There's no more tears or crying. (sighs) There will be a day when all of your suffering is gone. When the trials of tomorrow don't compare with what God has done or is going to do with your life. (sighs) And if that's the kind of hope that you want, I hope you'll let your group leader know that today as we head to groups.